Um, I guess our, our last question today that I'd like to talk about is non-branded hotels. It's a, it's a topic that seems to be coming up more and more um, in the media. Matter of fact, actually, I was looking at Travel and Leisure, uh, and um, they had a list of the hottest hotels in the world, 154 hotels on that list, um, and 114 of them out of 154 were non-branded, only 40 were branded. So very, very interesting. Um, I don't know. I don't know if travel and leisure is the whole look at the industry, but but um, how are they fitting in the lodging industry today? And are there particular situations or markets where independents are a better fit than a larger brand? Do you do you see? It, my experience shows that the independents really fit into the ends of the spectrum within the hotel industry. There's a lot of independents that are one star. They don't have the physical facilities or the ability to even command the brand. And so I don't think that's what the hotels we're talking about. I think we're talking about is hotels in the four and five star um, arena that are independently affiliated. The internet is a beautiful thing. Apps are a beautiful thing. What they have done is significantly lower the cost to consumers of acquiring information mm -hmm. about uh, hotels. And independent hotels and urban centers, I think, are a huge piece of the future. Um, as I uh, understand it, you're having an independent hotel congress uh, in November that's going to be talking about these very issues. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very timely and it should be a, a very well attended uh, conference. The um, urban centers and destination resorts, I think, are the two natural places for mm -hmm. the independent hotels. Mm -hmm. The three star business oriented uh, hotel, I think, is difficult. Uh, to sell um, as uh, independents because of the loyalty programs and the other infrastructure that the brands have that make it very easy for guests mm -hmm. uh, to consume their services. But for the guests, it's willing to take a little bit extra time to seek um, uh, alternative accommodations to the brands. I think uh, those customers find themselves very handsomely rewarded today by a wide set of very different uh, kinds of accommodation. And I think you know, we, this is not my ex expertise, but I hear over and over again that consumers are looking for great experiences. I find it in myself, I, uh, talking to my colleagues, I don't think it's a, you know, a baby boomer thing versus a Gen X or a millennial thing, but I do think the Gen X and the millennials are much more attuned to it, um, and brand loyalty means uh, less to them on, on some uh, uh, Things, although brand loyalty to things like Apple or uh, Samsung are quite remarkable, but brand loyalty to the hotel brands doesn't seem to enjoy the same strength of commitment on the part of consumers, where mm -hmm. consumers are uh, loyal to a set of experiences and to a set of people that deliver things that they want, mm -hmm. uh, and I don't think it's necessarily tied to the brand per se. It's very interesting. Thank you very much. Um, Jan, thanks very much for spending a few minutes with us today at Lenrock Blog. Uh, Andrew Benioff for Lenrock, thank you for joining us.